Hello, welcome. So, we are discussing about grinding. So, we will continue that. So, see that even in so like crushing, in grinding also we have primary grinding and secondary grinding. Why do we do it? Again, we do we try to do it in stages to minimize the generation of fines. Primary mills work faster and they try to scatter the feed and the secondary mill it is like your fine tuning they work gently and uniformly finer products are formed and that is the aim of this primary and secondary mills. The grinding could be again like you are crushing like open circuit grinding and closed circuit grinding. Open circuit grinding means the mill grinds the feed to desired size in one pass and removes the product to receive the next feed. That means, the material is coming there is a mill and when it is done that, that is you are given a predetermined residence time to the material for grinding and then it is going out. So, material going in and material going out and the time to travel this inside the mill that decides that how much is the retention time and there is no control on the quality of what is being discharged. So, that is that is what it is called the open circuit grinding. It needs more power because you will be having relatively harder materials also and softer materials. So, you need more power to break this hard, relatively harder materials and the finer materials will be ground to very further. And it requires skilled manpower, skilled operator that is who is skilled that who knows that okay, if that is my product discharge quality and I want to bring it back to this quality. So, how what should be the my control parameters that is what should be the RPM of my mill, what should be the flow rate of this mill input flow rate and all sorts of things that is whether I have to reduce the water quantity into that or the feed uh, say concentration I have to reduce. So, all these decisions have to be taken by the skilled operator. This open circuit grinding used normally for coarse grinding that means, here we are not trying to go for the finished product mostly they are in uh, say relatively finer sizes, but when it is desired that uh, we need relatively coarser grinding then probably we uh, choose or we select the open circuit grinding operations. And many a times the closed circuit grinding becomes very costly because of the nature of the ore and then we try to select as a compromise solution uh, the open circuit grinding. The closed circuit grinding means it is like analogous to our closed circuit crossing that means you have got a your say mill discharge and then that discharge is basically you are checking that what is the size of that discharge what is the size distribution of that. So, that is why I have written that mill discharge is sized and then say suppose I want my material to be ground to below 40 micrometer. So, I will have some size separation device at the discharge end. So, the mill output that is your grinding mill output will go to the classifier or go to the size separating device and whatever material is below 40 micrometer that will be taken away from the circuit, but the materials which are not yet ground below 40 micrometer they will be recycled back and they will be added to the fresh feed. So, this is basically the oversized, oversized particles are reground. The cycle repeats till all particles are of same size. Ideally, we try to do it, we try to repeat it unless and until all the particles what you are feeding they are uh, finer than a predetermined size. During regrinding of oversize, new material is also fed to the grinder. As I said, that you are having new feed and you are having a recycled field. 
So, how much is the recycled feed and how much is the new feed that we should be knowing and there are some calculations which we will do in due course of time. I will try to show you that how to do that those calculations. Need of less scaled operators and it is reduced cost and then we can automate it or uh, because in the size separation device we can fix that okay, whatever is the material finer than that that will automatically be taken out and coarser than that will be coming back to the feed and it will be mixed. So, we can automate the operation also it does not require much of skilled operators. Now, this is with the schematic I wanted to show you that what is that open circuit grinding as like a mill we call it grinding mill. So, this is the feed and it is coming there and then it is getting discharged as a product and when it happens like this. So, that means we are not controlling any of the product quality we call it open circuit grinding. You see here that in closed circuit grinding that the mill discharge or the product is not directly discharged like your open circuit grinding, but it is going to a classifier. Classifier is nothing but a size separation device for very fine particles the size ranges. And here the classifier overflow means the particles which are finer than your desired size. So, they will be just your product and the underflow which are relatively coarser they will be mixed with the new feed actually this arrow should be here. So, they are again sent back to the mill. So, this is called the closed circuit grinding. So, that means you are ensuring the discharge product quality here that we are uh, it is guaranteed that all the material which is passing through this circuit they are finer than a particular size. So, this is called a closed circuit grinding. Now, where closed circuit grinding is required? Now, where we have know that my liberation size of my material is below a typical size say suppose 40 micrometer or 50 micrometer. So, that means, uh, irrespective of the nature of the material we have to grind all the particles all the feed particles to below 40 or 50 micrometers. So, that is what we try to ensure it through this your closed circuit grinding operation that yes whatever is going out of the circuit that is finer than that 40 or 50 micrometer size. Because my process efficiency of my downstream unit operations largely depend on this uh, uh, say actually quality of my uh, say particles that is based on the size. So, that means, if they are coarser they will uh, create some more problems in the downstream processes. But here another thing also if they are too fine that also will create some problem to the downstream processes. So, that is uh, we have to uh, have proper choices of this mill parameters and the classifier parameters that is size separation devices parameters. So, that we do not generate much of ultra fines that means say suppose I need below 40 micrometers I should not end up generating 90 percent of the particle below 10 micrometers. Then where this grinding uh, uh, say occurs, what are the equipment we use? We call them in general that is tumbling mills because they are rotating type of mills and the mill with a liner because we use a liner that is your grinding surface inside the mill. It is just like a tube or as a, as a tubular shape and then we uh, introduce my material we also introduce some grinding media and then we try to rotate it along with the water or it may be dry also. And so, that is called the liner. Why do we use liner? No, because that material is susceptible to wear. So, when it is worn out we do not have to replace the entire mill, but we can replace the liner instead. So, the mill with, with the liner is half filled with the crossing bodies that is crossing bodies means that is the medium through which we are basically trying to grind or is fed at one end of the mill along with required quantity of water. It means mostly as I said in the previous class that the grinding is mostly done in wet conditions because of several advantages associated with this. So, now so what is the feed now? Now, we have got the feed like we have got the uh, feed material that is your ore plus water plus grinding media 
grinding media means as an artificially artificial media which we try to introduce which has to be much harder and much bigger than my particles to be broken because those particles we try to break i will show you in uh, say next uh, within say next few minutes that how the grinding occurs then you will try to understand it properly that what do i mean by grinding media so the ground product is discharged at the other end the water flushes the feed through the mill so the water helps in um, in uh, say uh, in transporting my uh, the materials that is which are ground through the discharge end because material is coming through this it has to go out through that so if it is totally dry material so the material flow will be a problem but when you are having water and then you are trying to rotate it and there is some inclination also of that mill now because that because of that that water is flowing and that because of the flow of water it will carry my particles also which helps in basically the throughput or say discharge of my mill product when the mill is rotated the feed water and the grinding media is churned with flying that is your tumble so everything gets tumbled now you see that this is a this is one example of a mill and you know, uh, say this is called uh, the, this is one of the tumbling mills and here you see that it is not necessary that the mill has to be a cylindrical shape you can have various types of shapes and that based on that your different varieties of shapes and then depending on the nature of the grinding media you are using we give different names uh, to these type of grinding uh, mills so here basically you see that this is the lining and this is the sail and this is the drive gear this is a grate that is your discharge that is your that is the discharge end and this is the feed end and this is my material which are to be ground so this is called a charge charge means it's a mixture of my ore plus water plus your grinding media so the charge means so every entire thing is getting tumbled in this mill okay now tumbling mill types depending on the as i said that the dimensions of the mill that is the geometry of the mill and based on the type of media you use we have uh, uh, so given different names to these grinding uh, mills we have got ball mill we have got rod mill we have got tube mill we have got pebble mill we have got autogenous grinding mill we have got semi autogenous grinding mills i will discuss some of the important mill types which is being used in the industry not all of them are very popular in the industry so i will skip some of them but i will discuss at length some of them in detail which are frequently used in the industry how the grinding occurs so grinding of the feed occurs as the kinetic energy of the tumbling load is dissipated as grinding of feed that means when you are rotating the entire charge as i said that it is the mineral or it is the ore plus your water plus your grinding media so when the everything is tumbled so what happens that the kinetic energy is produced and then it also it not only grinds the feed material it also wear the mill lining because of your impact because of abrasion and because of many other phenomena it may be corrosion also and the media also gets on out producing heat and noise so because of the churning action it also generates heat and noise so these are the basically uh, the uh, how you are utilizing the kinetic energy uh, or say whatever kinetic amount of kinetic energy you are generating majority of them are being lost as your in the in terms of heat and noise or uh, the wear of mill lining and the media and some part of that is being utilized for your grinding of feed material for which purpose it has been developed so here the energy utilization is very less or conversely i can say the energy consumption per ton of material to be ground 
to a particular size is huge in this grinding mills. So, kinetic energy is usefully used for collision between particles. So, there will be a particle particle collision, impact of falling grinding media that is uh, when your mill rotates. So, there will be an impact of the falling media on the particles and then the pressure loading ore particles that come under the grinding media or between the grinding media and the mill liner shock waves transmitted when the media tumble. So, there are many ways this kinetic energy is getting utilized, but effective utilization for the breakage is percentage utilization of that is very less. So, <clears throat> what are the grinding media we use and why do you need grinding media? So, grinding media we need because when it is basically being rotated, so that grinding media also falls and if they are heavier than my because as I said that they have to be bigger sizes than my material which I want to break and then they are much higher having much higher density and uh, they are much harder material than my material what I want to grind. So, when the material when the grinding media falls on top of the uh, say particle because of the impact there will be breakage even when the entire charge is being rotated. So, there will be abrasion between the ball surfaces and the liner surfaces and in between the particles they will be having some shearing action. So, that is the shearing. So, we have got impact, we have got shearing and there are many other mechanism through which the grinding occurs. So, what are the media grinding media we use? We normally use steel balls of varying sizes from 25 to 125 millimeter dia that depends on the mill size that depends on my uh, product size what I want even that depends on what is the material I want to break. They are also made of Hadfield manganese steel, chromium steels, chromium molybdenum steels even there are some instances where we can use we also use tungsten carbide or ceramic balls. They are costly, but it has got long life because the wear is very less. So, what is the problem with this? No, when the material when we are using your steel that is it may be Hadfield steel or chromium steel or chromium molybdenum steel. So, they get also get wear out. So, it is not the replacement cost only, but this worn out material they also contaminate my or material. So, what will happen in the downstream processes or maybe in the extraction processes they create lot of problem. So, many a times when it is not wanted. So, although they are costly, but sometimes the tungsten carbide or ceramic balls are used, but because of their long life and because of less chances of contaminating your products. Large pieces of ore are also used as grinding medium we call it autogenous grinding. So, what do we do? Now, as a larger particle breaking the smaller particle to much more finer sizes. So, that means, when we have a wide size distribution like we have got say suppose 50 millimeter particle and we have got also up to say 1 millimeter particle. So, if we try to rotate this, so the 50 millimeter particle may will when it hits the 1 millimeter particle they will be broken further. Even the 50 millimeter particle because of repeated your rotation they may also be broken to very finer sizes. So, here we do not use any media artificial media it is basically bigger particle hitting the smaller particle and then you are generating much more finer particles. So, when you use this we call it autogenous grinding. <coughs> These are some of the <coughs> say snapshots of some of the your balls which are being utilized used in a ball mill and you see that they are of various sizes. So, balls range in size from 1 to 6 inches they are made of cast iron may be many times four steel or alloy steel and larger balls help in coarse grinding because what happens when you have larger balls. So, the void spaces created in between the larger space larger balls is much bigger. 
than when you are utilizing a mixture of your say, smaller balls and the larger balls. Because what happens now when we have only larger balls, so we have got huge void spaces and the particles sit there and so they will not be ground further because it is they are sitting in the void spaces. So, you end up ultimately generating relatively coarser product than uh, when you have a mixture of say smaller balls and bigger balls. So, when I want a finer product, I should use a mixed uh, particle mixed sizes of the balls because these smaller balls will again hit the particles which are sitting in between the void spaces of the bigger balls and then it will generate much more finer products. Otherwise, we use only, uh, so that is why uh, we try to use a size distribution of the balls. <clears throat> you see this, this is an animation which is showing how a, a your mill it may be a rod mill, it may be a ball mill, how the grinding occurs. So, this is basically your charge material, sorry. So, uh, when the charge material is basically rotated and then what will happen everything will falls back will, will fall back at a different your axis. So, what will happen is because of m b square by r. So, you see that so, where the aim is more is basically for the grinding media balls that is the grinding media that means mostly the steel balls they are having more of your masses. So, they will be hitting the uh, they will be falling back at the last at the at the end of the entire cycle. So, the lighter particle that is mostly in this case that is your ore materials they will fall faster than the because they will be uh, uh, say rotated to a lesser distance than my steel balls. So, the materials may fall here and after that the ball will hit here. So, this is called the toe region and then because of the impact the particles get broken. Another way of breakage is when the material is being transported like this. So, what happens there will be a shear force there will be abrasion between the particles and between the particle and particle between the surface of the my grinding media and the particle and even there will be your uh, say abrasion between your uh, media surfaces and the particle surfaces and some particle may be entrapped in between my grinding media surface and the your uh, say the liner surfaces and then because of the abrasion there may be some uh, the, so there will be particle breakage. So, there are many ways and then we will discuss uh, uh, so later on that how it actually helps in breaking. Uh, we will go to the mechanism and uh, these are some of the mills which are being used the gigantic mills in industry. So, these days even the uh, a mill of uh, a tumbling mill of 10,000 tons per hour they are also available and they have to be robustly built unless and until they are robustly built it, it cannot have the your it cannot withstand the stresses. So, the material has to be strong enough and then the, to uh, have the to ensure that the life of the mill is uh, uh, so very good otherwise the replacement cost of these mills are very high. So, here the problem main problem is that that is the challenge to the mineral processing people is that how do I minimize the energy cost because it has been shown that around only 1 to 2 percent of the total energy input energy is being utilized for effective grinding remaining around 98 to 99 percent of that input energy is being lost in the form of your heat or maybe in the noise it may be in the uh, wear of different materials and your know, shock waves like that. So, in uh, so next lecture we will continue this and till then thank you very much.